25. We're almost up to 30. There's 30. 35. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds, where today we're going to jump in to the 59 Dodge Coronet. There's a lot to get done, and we don't have a whole lot of time to do it. So let's go ahead and jump into this. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking, and I'm probably not going to do a step-by-step -step for you guys either. I know there's probably some of you that really want to see, like, step-by-step. -step. We'll see how it goes throughout the making of the video, okay? There's so much, <laughs> so much going on right now, so much to get done. I've already started. The upper radiator hose was kinked. Um, it's too long. You see that kink right there? So I'm actually going to have to shave off a piece of the end there, a piece of the end there. I'm probably not going to record that. That should uh, loosen things up so it's not kinked so hard anymore. Next, uh, thermostat gasket we pulled off, and the thermostat we are removing and leaving out. Uh, take a look at this thermostat, guys. That's not normal. All that black on the thermostat, absolutely not normal. I don't know what's going on with that there. And it's also really, really dark. You probably won't be able to see, but inside of the thermostat, uh, where the thermostat goes in the intake manifold, also very, very dark. Um, not sure what's going on there. Yesterday I had it running for about 30 minutes. We rigged up temporarily a uh, four to seven PSI, uh, 35 gallon per hour, Mr. Gasket fuel pump, uh, which actually worked. It kept the car running, but the carburetor was spewing gasoline all over the intake. The carburetor is absolutely shot. I got another one of those. While it was running, it built up pressure on the cooling system and this piece broke. It literally, uh, there's a pinhole in the side of this, which I think you can see right there. Uh, it, it just popped. So what I did is I got, a, I got a coolant flush system that I'm gonna put in here, which is why I'm leaving the thermostat. Out. Besides that, it's summertime. We don't need a thermostat in this car in the summertime. Anyway, uh, here's what I'm using. Blue Devil Complete Radiator Flush and Oil Degreaser. Uh, we're going to use this new gasket, and I'm going to uh, probably hook this flush kit. You hook a water hose to it. I'm going to hook this, I guess, right here. Now, if any of you want to chime in and help me out and help me understand how this heater system works, I would appreciate it. I haven't had time to look into it yet. What I find interesting is the amount of heater hoses that go into this thing uh, on later model or newer model uh, 60s, 70s. Instead of all of these weird hoses, you just have like a hose that goes to the heater core, a hose that comes back and returns the engine. But on this one, you've got one that goes from the engine to, I would assume, uh, to the heater core. Then you've got another one that comes out of the heater core. But then you've got this, this loop. What is this? What is this hose that goes from up here and loops around to the bottom? Uh, I, don't, I don't understand what that's doing there. I also don't know exactly I know this is a bypass valve, but there's nothing hooked to it. So I don't really understand what that's doing there either. So obviously I've got some work to do on the cooling system. Uh, fill it up with water. Here's the stuff that I flushed out of it. I collected it in this bucket. It looks, it looks really gross. Uh, really, really gross. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm wondering if we may have a head gasket issue with this carb. We're not, we're not even going to focus on that right now. Next. Aside from getting the cooling system put back together, we have the new carburetor. I was able to find the exact same carburetor that's on it right now. And uh, this is not the original carburetor. The original carburetor was a Stromberg, I think it's called, uh, WW2 or something, or W2 Stromberg. Uh, this is a fairly common replacement. I believe this is off of a uh, early 60s Dodge, maybe a truck or something, I don't know. But this is the identical carburetor and this was only $79 on Amazon Prime so it was here next day uh, yes $79 for a for a carburetor next we have a brand new fuel tank which I honestly did not expect to show up today this wasn't supposed to be here uh, for several days but it showed up so here it is this was $300 $279 plus like $40 shipping for a new gas tank it's got uh, the locking ring, little gasket there, and this I paid for separately. They went ahead and installed this for me, but I don't even know, yeah, I don't even think I want to take that out. To be honest with you, this looks like kind of a bear. Anyway, 
This is a sending unit that I paid, uh, I think about $70 for. There are two different types of sending units for this car. I didn't know which one this car had because I haven't gone under it and taken it out. So it's either a one, you know, just a plug on wire type uh, right here, or this one has a pigtail already attached. The difference is the ohms, the resistance uh, between these two. So the fuel gauge will either work with this one or the fuel gauge will work with that one, but the fuel gauge will not be accurate uh, with one of these. One of these is not gonna work right. So to figure that out, we pretty much gotta get that gas tank off first which is what we're going to work on here in just a minute. It is hot as hell out here today. I think we can do this without jacking the car up. Uh, last night, I came out in the middle of the night, I installed new lenses. So we have a new brake light lens and we have a new reverse light lens. These are not broken, makes it look a lot better. Plus it's legal, uh, license plate light where all the lights work, all the signals work. Um, so we should, be, we should be good to go guys. Probably air, air the tires up a little bit. We're gonna find out at least I hope we're gonna find out in this video if this car actually drives. Today, we should be able to take her out on her maiden voyage. So I'm gonna get started on this. Where to start? I think I'm gonna start with the gas tank because that's probably gonna be the biggest PITA since there is still gas in it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start by putting, dropping the old fuel tank, getting it out from under here, sliding the new one in, figuring out what sending unit. I don't think I'm gonna record that, guys. I don't because that's, it's going to be hard to get the camera in there, but uh, let's pull the old tank out. Let's sit it next to this one, make sure everything matches up. All right, boys and girls, we have created a monster. We've gotten ourselves into a mess. New gas tank, old gas tank. Old gas tank is out, and as it turns out, the old gas tank has the wrong sending unit in it, so the gas gauge would have never worked properly. Uh, the stuff that's in here, I'm going to see if I can even get you guys in there hold on let me see let me see if I can get you guys some light I've had to play with both sending units wire the, wiring them all up in an attempt to uh, figure out which one actually goes to this fuel gauge so I'll be honest with you I don't think you're gonna be able to see in there very well I've got the light on as best I can no you're not going to be able to see in there. Okay, well, anyway, suffice it to say, it's rusty. It's a mess. So I got a brand new gas tank. This thing, guys, literally, it came off and out of the car in like 20 minutes. It's pro probably the easiest gas tank I've ever dropped in my entire life. We figured out which sending unit it is. That is a single wire sending unit that came out of it. But the one that it needs is a dual wire sending unit. It has a ground strap as well as a signal wire. And this one, this one is the one that it's going to take to, uh, no, sorry, wrong one. This one, I've got all the, I've got all the alligator clips, one for a ground, one for a signal, I've been able to adjust it. And it seems very accurate. So we will have a fuel gauge. Uh, I'm not going to talk through this whole thing, guys. I'm going to jump under here. I'm going to put this back in with the new sending unit locked in place. I'm gonna bolt it up and then I'm gonna run some fuel line and the fuel pump. Fuel pump's gotta be mounted within 10 feet or 10, uh, 12 inches of the fuel tank. So somewhere around, I don't know, somewhere over here somewhere, I'm gonna find somewhere to mount that new pump, get our line in, get everything routed up to the engine bay so that we can, uh, you know, put a carburetor on it. I got a new choke for it. Uh, not a new choke, but the new uh, thermostat style st choke. The heat causes the spring to expand and actually opens the choke for you. Um, I've got a new one of those. I'm gonna hook this all up, guys. I'm so excited that we're gonna have a gas gauge, fresh fuel, and this thing, this thing's gonna run. I don't know if it's gonna run all right. I don't know if it's gonna be uh, blown up, but damn it, it's gonna run on its own and it's gonna drive. Let's get to it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, happy 4th of July. I know this video is probably not gonna come out until <laughs> I don't know, probably closer to the 20th, but uh, for me, it's uh, it's literally 4th of July. I worked on this car. Sorry for the video angles there, guys. I worked on this car until uh, it was after 4 o'clock in the morning when I had to give up on her. Um, it literally kicked my ass. But here's where we're at. All right. 
cooling systems back together. This hose no longer has such a bad kink in it. I'm going to have to replace that hose though. Um, we've got the battery installed. Cooling system is back together. We've got a new carburetor. We've got uh, all new fuel lines running from the front all the way back. We've got a new fuel tank up underneath. New sending unit. It's not finished hooked up yet. Uh, I've got to hook the ground wire up. But look under there. Okay, brand new fuel tank under there. One little ground wire hanging out, nothing leaking. And the good news is she runs. The bad news is she doesn't drive. Um, I know, huge disappointment. I'm disappointed too. I will fire it up for you. The fast idle is probably turned up a little high on this. I had to disconnect the choke too. The, the When the choke is installed, it's always keeping the choke completely closed and I can't get it right there there's some tweaking I got to do obviously this is not the carburetor that originally came with it um, like back in the day so we're having a few issues there the main issue the, the reason it won't drive is because of this this is the gas pedal and no matter how I try I built this I made this last night I, I just came up with an idea uh, the carburetor opens this way okay but the gas pedal goes this way. Okay, this would be rested forward is how it tries to push. When you hit the gas, it goes from here and it pushes forward. So I put this down here thinking that it would push forward and open it. The problem is it doesn't. All it does is try to bend this here. I've tried adjusting it all different ways, guys. I can't get this linkage to work. And I think the reason is because of this bend. You see this bend? Runs at, I don't know, 40 degrees or so, maybe a little less, but there's about a, I don't know, a 35, 40 degree bend right here, but it's going down. I think that bend needs to be flipped, and that bend needs to be going up to help push this up. Yeah, also these springs are not hooked up right. I'm, I've been fighting this thing, like I said, guys, all night. So here's what I'm going to do for you. Um, I am going to give her a start make sure that she's still running okay this morning she was fine at four o'clock in the morning it's now 11. i don't see any reason why anything would have changed since then but uh you know the good news is it's all together it's all working it's almost done we're so close to being able to drive it i still think we're going to be able to drive it in this video it's just going to take a little more a uh, little more tinkering another thing i noticed is there seems to be a misfire i think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I hear a misfire. This has true duals, so they don't. there's no X-pipe or anything. It literally goes from one cylinder, or not one cylinder, one bank all the way out the back. And I'm pretty sure we've got a misfire on this uh, bank somewhere. That's something we'll have to check out later. For now, I'm going to hook those springs up because you, uh, you don't want those things off right now. It's wide open throttle. Put those springs back on, see if we can fire it up. You can hear her run. Well, you know how that thing on SpongeBob goes four hours later. Um, <laughs> I've been out here and uh, people just been stopping by and talking to me about the car. Uh, people love this car. And I'll be honest with you guys, it's one of the things that I really love about this car. I really do. Is It's such a unique... Let's walk around it one time real quick. But it's, it's such a unique piece. Um, people literally just stop to ask you about it and she's wearing some old worn out faded paint it obviously doesn't look new it's not anywhere near show quality but this car gets attention people want to stop and they ask you what is it some people know what it is some people stop by and they're like man that is a beautiful cornet what year is it um, I can't tell you how many people have stopped by in fact yesterday it was really cute an older lady was taking a walk and she caught me out here working on it and she said uh she said what year is that and i told her she said she said i graduated high school in 1960 if that tells you anything about how old i am she said she remembers a day when you saw these cars everywhere she said it was a beautiful car and she asked me if when i got it running i would take her for a ride in it and i think i'm going to do better than that i think once we get it where you know i, I feel it's safe I think if she wants to, I'm going to let her drive it. Um, sweet, sweet older lady. She lives right down the street from me. And I've had several people just stop and want to talk about the car. And that is one of the things I really love. It's not a Mustang. It's not a Camaro. You know, it's not a pony car. 
It's not a sports car, it's not a fast car, but it is a unique car. It's a very interesting looking car, especially with your two-speed push-button automatic, your speedometer that doesn't have any needles, it's, it, it's lights. Now, of course, I don't know if any of that works, but I will show you something, watch this. Just like that, guys. Listen to her. Do you hear a misfire? It sounds like this side is running smooth, but I hear a t t t t t t t t. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we got a misfire on that side, which is interesting because we have uh, currently new spark plugs new plug wires, distributor cap, the rotor, the points, like the whole ignition system's been replaced. So if we do have a misfire on this side, I'm gonna say it might be from possibly uh, these, you have to adjust the valve lash on them. So it may be a valve is out of adjustment on this side. So we're probably gonna have to pop that valve cover off and adjust the, uh, adjust the valve lash. But if you look at the engine, it looks like it's actually running pretty damn smooth but I think it does, I think it does have a misfire. And I've had a lot of people asking me about the PCV valve. These cars don't use PCV valves. What they have is they have this PCV looking thing that comes out of the valve cover right here, right there. And it goes straight to the concrete, straight to the ground. So when it builds up too much pressure, instead of uh, blowing seals out or recirculating back to the intake, it literally dumps right onto the ground. That's how they did it back in the day. They had no problem with pollution in the 50s none at all all right guys let's see if we can get this thing driving today all right guys it's been hours hours of my fourth of july to make this video for you guys i'm dying to get this out we're about to drive it for the first time she jumped into gear he brake is off All right, she's smoking a little bit, but. First drive, guys. Look at the, uh, look at the speedometer working. 20 miles an hour, look at that. <laughs> oh my God, this is great. Do the, wait, do the brakes work? Uh, yeah, they work and it doesn't pull either. Oh, wow. <laughs> My God, guys! Twenty-five. We're almost up to thirty. There's thirty. Thirty-five. Forty. God. Oh my God. We got to 45 miles an hour and she drives, guys. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. The brakes are good. No power brakes makes it kind of a challenge, but it's doable. <laughs> oh, guys. Do you have any idea how happy I am? She turns all right. Timing is still off. I'm sure there's some uh, mixture screws that need to be taken care of. No seat belts. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you go, girl. Oh. This, this, guys, this is what life's all about, man. I know family and everything, too, but, but this is living right here, man. This is living. Taking a car that you know nothing about that's been sitting for God knows how long and getting her back on the road again. I, I know she ain't perfect, 
I know we got a long way to go, but there's nothing like that first drive, guys. There's nothing like that first drive. Guys, I know we're late uh, to 4th of July, but for me, it's 4th of July. I, I hope you understand. I probably didn't say happy 4th of July in any of my videos because I didn't make any of those videos on the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July, everyone. Better late than never. And I feel like Independence Day is it's an important day for our country. At least I feel that way. A lot of people don't anymore, but I still feel that way. And I feel like this couldn't be sweeter than liberating this car from its chains. It's been held down for God knows how many years due to mechanical issues. The previous owners died. And it's obvious that at one point they loved this car. Um, we liberated this thing. It's Independence Day, not just for the country, but for this car, man. We took her on her first drive, July 4th, 2020, Independence Day. Thank you to all of you for making this possible. Now, let's, uh, I keep reaching for a seatbelt, guys. Ain't no seatbelts in, <laughs> ain't no seatbelts in this car. None. So, you twist the e-brake, push it in. Yeah, she got me. She got me real damn good, man. And you put her in drive, hold the brakes. Solid, there you go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The mileage is 85,708. Now, I, hopefully you guys will be able to watch this, uh, this speedometer, because it is truly epic. Let me see if we can get you on a get you on a straight road here. You see it? You see the way? Ah, I'm not gonna be able. There it is, right there. You see it? You see how it turned green and then it'll turn orange? I, they're not lights. I don't know what they are exactly, but that's really cool. It comes out green and then it all turns orange suddenly. It's 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 pretty it's pretty bizarre, guys. As soon as we get a green light, I'll show you. Look at the fuel gauge. We actually have almost a quarter of a tank. In the fuel temperature, I took the thermostat out. It's running nice and cool. Oil pressure is doing all right. Amps are doing all right. Here you go. Here you go. Watch this, guys. Look at that spot. See how it turns green? Look at her go. Look at her go. You'll see what I mean. She turns orange here at like 35. There it goes. Look at that. Look at it turning orange. Can you believe that she runs, guys? Uh, truthfully, I can't. I am, I am absolutely blown. Just blown away, man. Blown away that we're cruising this old girl down the street right here. Look at her go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a wrap. We're not going to be able to really take it too far, or go too fast. Obviously, the tires are old. Um, these are Cokers. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Coker's one of the big brands you go to when you want old school white wall tires like this. So we're going to have to get some new tires now that I know that it drives. It needs all new belts. The belts are all ready to break. Hoses, because they're crap. It's holding pressure, um, thankfully. Radiator appears to be doing all right. Water pump is circulating. As I said earlier, no thermostat. Uh, but I do think we're going to need all new heater hoses, new upper lower radiator hose as well. We need to just take care of that. The belts all need to be replaced. Obviously needs fluids changed. Um, oil and oil filter would be the first thing because the oil in this is flooded in gasoline. It's actually over full on oil from all the gasoline that was being dumped into this thing from that old carburetor. But this is what it's all about guys right here. For those of you that don't know, this is the type of stuff I live for man cool interesting unique old cars which i don't get to do them very often in fact aside from my c3 corvette guys this is the first time we've done a car this old on the channel and this is the first time i have ever owned a car from the 50s and i think i picked a good one i do the car is a conversation piece even with its current patina people love it We're wearing its old worn out paint you see the primer showing through like it looks rough but people just love coming up to you and talking to you about the car i'm excited uh we're not going to stop here guys i've had a lot of people on instagram that's seen this by the way follow me on instagram auto auction rebuilds and you're going to get to see previews of stuff like this long before it ever hits youtube guys a week two weeks sometimes in advance if you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. If you don't, that's fine too. Do whatever you want to do. Um, but guys, 
a lot of people are like, please don't stop there. You know, you got it running, you got it driving. Truthfully, to be honest with you, if I was smart, I would stop here. I would absolutely stop here. There is no money, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, there's no money in restoring old cars. There is not. I don't care what kind of car it is, there's no money in it. You will spend more restoring a car than you'll ever be able to sell a car for. And for that reason, we are not going to be restoring this car. But, but we're not done yet. I'm going to continue on so long as you guys keep watching the videos, as long as you're enjoying the content and I'm able to make some money from the YouTube videos, we will continue on with this car. I'll tell you what, guys. I had a wonderful time putting this car back together and getting it on the road. It's not 100%. Some of the stuff I had to do in engineer just to get this thing to drive for this video uh, cannot be left that way. Uh, <laughs> there's some there is some definite engineering going on here that we we're going to have to uh, we're gonna have to take care of in the future and I absolutely will. but it is the 4th of July. It is now late into the evening. It's past five o'clock. The kids and everybody are waiting on me because we're supposed to be out doing fireworks tonight. So I think it's only appropriate that for this video, we also include some fireworks. So uh, we'll throw some fireworks in at the end of the video. I just wanted to assure you guys that uh, uh, number one, I have no intention of restoring this car. Uh, number two, we're not stopping where we're at. We are going to continue with fixing it. We're gonna get the tires, as I said, fluids changed and stuff like that. Uh, definitely needs an alignment, have the front end checked. There's a lot more to do and if you guys want to see it, all you got to do is hit that thumbs up button to let me know that you want to see more content on the 59 Dodge Coronet. Comment your thoughts down below. Comment your ideas. Hell, comment below and tell me what you would do next to the car. For me, it's tires. Uh, tires are of the utmost importance right now. Tires, belts, fluids have got to be done. I love this car. The amount of people that stop to talk to me about this old faded paint car is insane uh it's not just me that loves it other people apparently love it as well um if you guys enjoyed this video like i said please hit that thumbs up button it lets me know that you want to see more of this and we will definitely come back and do more of this i don't know what the future holds for this car a lot of that really does depend on you guys and gals watching these videos thank you so much truthfully this is my first 50s car and it was so much fun bringing it back. And the fact that we were able to take it on its first drive. Here, in case you guys... Hold on. In case you guys don't believe me. Uh, look at this. It is 4.45 p.m. Saturday, July 4th, 2020. Okay, so I literally have been out here sweating for days trying to get this thing going so that I could make this video for you. And the fact that it all came together and worked out on Independence Day is super super cool all right guys i guess with that we'll get on to the fireworks show then we'll get out of here all right so i told you guys i'd share some of the fourth of july with you to get started we got the bonfire going we got a few little drinky drinks going as well we got the grill going we got some steak out here on top of these look how beautiful these coals are man mm -mm -mm, those steaks are gonna be bomb we've already we've already started some of the festivities uh without you guys and now it's about time to light up some of these fireworks yeah go for it man have at it light them up light them up see what she does oh it's a dud oh All right, here we go. What are these, firecrackers? Oh, boy. All right, you guys, you guys figure it out? Drop it in there and light it. There you go. Here it goes, man. There you go, drop it in there, keep your face away from it. Never ever put your face over it. Oh yeah, here we go, got some more going on over here. 
Uh oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Woo! Poop. Two at once. Oh boy. Get yours lit, you ready? Get it to it, go. There we go, there we go. Let's see what this does. All right, man, that one took off fast, didn't it? Hopefully we got it facing the right damn direction. Too close, man. Too close. Uh oh. What's this gonna do? Damn. Oh boy. Everybody lit one. Here we go. That's one. Where do we? Ah. Here goes another one. And they go again. Uh oh. Here it goes. There's going to be so much trash to clean up tomorrow, I'm telling you. Here we go. His didn't like it. All right, grand f grand finale right here. Let's see what happens.
Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the fireworks show. If you did, man, one more time, hit that thumbs Oh, yeah, sorry. Hit that thumbs up button. Leave your comments down below. Please follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Auto Auction Rebuilds. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button. I would truly appreciate it. There's going to be a lot more to come on this car. Until next time, everybody, happy 4th of July. Stay safe out there, and I will catch you all very soon in the next one.